Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special Elwood City Limits presentation. Yes, it is the week of Easter, and certainly hope that if you're, wh whether you're celebrating, whether you're not, whether you're doing something for the long weekend that I certainly hope you have, thanks for spending time with me, Will Young, as part of Elwood City Limits, the episodic Arthur podcast. And it's time to talk about some of those episodes because this is the wrap-up for Season 6. It's been, uh, well, an interesting time, as you'll no doubt uh, know if you've listened to all of the episodes. And if you haven't yet, well, you all have plenty of time to go on your favorite podcast service and check it out. All of Season 6 has been covered on Elwood City Limits. My co-host Lucas Mancini and I have been hard at work to make sure that, uh, well, we represented it in full fashion. And it seems we did just that. And, uh, yeah, there's been ups, downs, creamy middles. We're going to talk about it all. So why don't we get things started as I always like to. I'm going to give the floor over here to my pal, Lucas Mancini, one of the guests at my wedding. Hey, wait a second. Uh, hang hang, hang, hang. That's my wedding ring. <laughs> yeah, at this point, uh, already married. And if you want to know more about that, um... I'll save it for the upcoming filibuster that's going to be next week. So you'd have to be a Patreon member uh, to get the full deets there. Anyway, going to be great. Season 7, can't wait for it. But we got to talk about Season 6. So here comes Lucas Mancini. He's going to give you his thoughts on the season that, we, that was and his top 5. Top 5, top 5, top 5, top 5. Hey guys, it's Lucas here from Elwood City Limits, and this is my top five episodes of season six. Pat on the back to all of you for listening to us talk about this season. Thank you to Will for doing it with me. And um, just remember, we're almost at 100 episodes, so thank you for being on this journey with us along the way. Um, so without further ado... Let's get into our top five Arthur episodes of season six. I have to make a last minute adjustment. I just noticed I forgot an episode. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay. Now we're really ready to rock and roll, baby. Top five episodes in order from least, but it's still in my top five, to greatest. But before that, I want to provide a little bit of context. I have to say, hot take off the jump. Season 6 might be my least favorite season of Arthur yet. And not because every episode was particularly uh, bad, but because I uh, just find that there was a lot of forgettable episodes. It was actually kind of hard to put together a top 5 list because there wasn't, with a few exceptions, um, there wasn't a lot of huge like episodes where I felt super passionately about. There was a lot of middle of the road episodes this season, which is unfortunate. But hey, onward and upwards. And I think this season uh, deserves merit for two reasons. One, Steven Crowder's finally out as brain. Pfft, see you later. Less we talk about that, the better. Um, glad that guy's gone. And two, um, that remix of Believe in Yourself. Oh my God, what a slapper. So without further ado, my top five list, starting with number five, the Secret Life of Dogs and Babies. Some fans love it. Some fans hate it. I'm personally on the love it side. I like the gimmick. I think it's a unique change of pace. And especially when you think about when this episode came out in the season, uh, there had never been an episode like it before. So I'm into it. And I like it for the Nemo voice alone uh, earns it a spot on this list. The next episode, number four, I'm not sure if I'm putting it on just because of the episode or because I enjoyed recording the episode with... Uh, friend of the show Alex Moore as well as Will so much but this was my definitely my favorite episode to record this year and that is uh, not this year this season uh, and that is brother can you spare a clarinet with uh, binky again a binky episode there has to be one in every top five list um, and I don't think I've laughed so hard uh, recording Elwood City Limits uh, in a while since I laughed during that episode. So I highly recommend, if you haven't heard the one where we talk about Brother Can You Spare a Clarinet, I, I recommend you check that out. The next one, after my own heart, it's Best of the Nest. Um, one of the most absurd Arthur episodes. Uh, again, one with a extremely dark ending. Everybody remembers this episode. The better of the two Confuse the Goose episodes, Brain, um, 
ousted by the best of the nest uh, PC game that only like six people can play. Uh, I, I don't even want to talk about it too much because I'm just going to go down the rabbit hole. I mean, from the ending where it seems like a bear might eat them all to uh, the way the game operates and how confusing it is. Uh, it's just awesome. It's just suck a, such a sick episode. And another great episode we had a guest over to, to review, JV. Um, so yeah, I, that's another one. Go back and listen to it. Um, but it's also a really cool episode to watch, uh, even if you didn't listen to our show as well. The next one, and uh, uh, the final two, not to give away, have something in common. But we have The Boy Who Cried Comet. I'm a soft, uh, big softy for Buster, of course. Always got to give the regards to a Buster episode. And The Boy Who Cried Comet is Buster Paranoia at his best. Um, it's just like a really fun, unhinged performance from Buster the whole episode. Uh, uh, the way the episode wraps up, uh, the conclusion... Um, the whole thing is just a joy to watch. Uh, I highly recommend. It's definitely one of my favorites of this season, and it would be my favorite if it wasn't for another episode that starts with The Boy, which is The Boy with His Head in the Clouds. Um, this episode uh, is about something that's near and dear to my own heart. It's about George dealing with having dyslexia, something that I have, and I thought it was really interesting and respectful and and cool the way Arthur tackled it. And I always go back to the, you know, my gold standard for quote unquote serious Arthur episodes is Grandpa Dave's Country Farm, uh, which is like really early, like season two, may not even, maybe even season one. I'm not sure. It's it, it's an older one. It was one of the, the first ones I remember really feeling passionate about, but it, it, execute upon, it executes upon everything that Arthur's good at, which is, you know, taking something that you don't normally see tackled in children's television and done in a re really respectful, really nuanced way that can still be funny, but it's, it's heartfelt at the same time. It's just the best that Arthur has to offer. And I think that The Boy With Its Head in the Clouds is another example of an episode on the level of something like Grandpa Dave's Country Farm. So that's my episodes of season six. Again, kind of a disappointing season, but I love doing the show. I w would do it even if nobody listened to it, but luckily uh, people do listen to it, which makes doing it even that much better. And I look forward to doing uh, season seven. Also, congrats to Will on getting married. Had to fit that in there as well. Uh, and it'll be uh, a couple weeks before we get back or a week or so. Uh, that's why this is being released, because Will's off on his honeymoon. Uh, but I, I look forward to getting back into the swing of things and doing the show again. I'm going to be off school soon, so we'll have a little more time to dedicate to the show. Hopefully we'll get some uh, more creative stuff going. Uh, hopefully have some more guests or whatever. Stuff that takes a lot of extra work that I haven't had the time to dedicate to, uh, we can start doing that soon. So uh, thank you. I'm Lucas from Elwood City Limits. <laughs> Thank you, Lucas. And now we move to my thoughts here of season six. So it certainly started off on a great uh, on a great note, didn't it? There were it's it's important to note, I think, that this season there were a lot of uh, uh, highly anticipated episodes. People were really looking forward, including yourself, most likely, were looking forward to a couple of specific episodes that we were going to talk about. And it started out: Sue Ellen gets her goose cooked, and Best of the Nest. That was. A really great way to start a season, I gotta say. Um, I really enjoyed that. And then, as we kept going along, it kind of took a little bit of a dip. The couple of episodes after that were kind of, you know, uh, varying for sure. But I'd say, looking back on them, they're not as, say, fondly remembered as uh, other seasons before it. And then in the middle, we had, you know, a, a couple of episodes that really shone through. And then by the end, if you listen to our episode last week, you know, not a super great way to end a season. So a little bit uneven is what I would call this one. And that's okay, because I think what is getting through once again, I feel like I mentioned this on every season recap, you can listen to them yourself if you're wondering, is that we're really getting into the period here where the writers, uh, we're expand, we're, we're uh, not expanding, the word I'm looking for is that we're excising as many of the normal Arthur episodes that we can do. We've done those, and most of them have been done pretty well. But now let's get weird with it. Let's see where this really goes. Or not even weird, just take a, a concept that would be kind of difficult to talk about um, 
it, it, like a real life concept and then apply it to Arthur and put a little bit of that uh, that lo- Arthur logic in there and it makes it a bit more interesting. Even like starting up a school newspaper like in Citizen Friendski, that at least or DW's Backpack Mishap. You know, there's lots of kids shows that have uh, you know like oh I lost this thing, what do I do? But in this one, it's like no, that we discovered the character of Omble. You know, so a little bit of that Arthur twist to it. I really appreciated that, even when it's episodes that I'm not super crazy about. All right, speaking of episodes I am crazy about, it's time for my top five here. It's the top five episodes of Arthur Season 6. We don't really like to do a bottom 5A because there's not enough episodes to really, like, essentially, we were just talking about the whole season. And, you know, I want to try and keep it positive. So let's start with number five. It's Brother, Can You Spare a Clarinet? This is my favorite Binky episode of the season, which definitely puts it in that rarefied air. Binky episodes are really becoming ones that I look forward to, Lucas looks forward to, and uh, this one was fun. Uh, It was more about embracing Binky's mean side, which we don't see as much these days, and this one was a really fun way to do it. Uh, I love the the ambition of Binky Barnes to want to get rid of all music. All right, well, let's see what you got. And his plan, I mean, it is for a little kid. But it's not all that bad, you know? It's <laughs> it's interesting, to say the least. And there's some really funny moments. Love the return of the tough customers. Uh, I, w- I wish they were around more. But the fact that they're not really makes their appearances seem special. And uh, in the end, uh, it was all aces for Binky, which makes me feel pretty good. Number four, this is actually a tie position. It's going to go to the entire episode featuring Sue Ellen gets her goose cooked and best of the nest. Great episode to start off the season with. Very interesting to see Arthur tackling video games. I'm hoping that as time goes on, that becomes a bit more prevalent. Video games, I mean, I love them. Lucas loves them. You probably love them too, demographically speaking. But yeah, I'm. Uh, they took such an interesting spin on it, and uh, it was funny to watch it kind of evolve. In the first half of the episode, you know, everybody loves it, and, uh, you know, it, it reminded me of my, my days with, you know, flash animation games and all this kind of stuff. And then in the second half, it's completely different. So they did two different takes on video games and kind of had it stay. It, it's, it can only be so relevant, you know, in 2001. But there are parts of it that still kind of shown through. And uh, the interplay between the characters was a lot of fun as well. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's it's a very memorable Arthur episode as well. You remember the one about Virtual Goose or them playing the video game and kind of the twists and turns it takes from there. And it, and, and it's, it's that for a reason. It's a great, um, really, I was going to say heavy, but it's not heavy. It's just there's a lot of stuff happening, and stuff happens fast. So it's a, a very kinetic Arthur episode, and just good fun. Very memorable for a reason. Number three, I'm going to say, is The Good Sport featuring Michelle Kwan. I, you know, as soon as I was watching this episode and I kind of could remember where it was going, and I was like, boy, I can't wait to see Francine get hers. In a way that I knew that the episode was kind of leading me towards. At the end, Francine did learn a lesson. It's not that I want her to, like, just, you know, get foiled. It's that I want to see her become a better person. It seems she's always fighting against that part of her personality. And here I think we did see it a little bit. And I also have to give big ups to Michelle Kwan for her uh, performance here. I think she did a really gr- uh, good job and uh, took, took uh, I'm guessing what, I mean, she's a, a top-notch athlete. So I imagine there's um, maybe a bit of a challenge when it comes to acting for a lot of athletes and I think she did perfectly fine uh it was just kind of good to see this sort of message played out it's not it's a bit more complex than uh other Arthur uh mottos or messages or what have you it is about being a good sport but it goes beyond that a little bit it's like they're not just you should it's here's why you should and I always am appreciative of episode messages that managed to go the extra mile rather than don't do this you know and i also appreciated the uh, uh further development of jenna as a character and that's just because uh she has my wife's name number two the boy with his head in the clouds this was again a great message that 
Arthur made even better. Um, it was also really nice to be able to talk about this with somebody and as well you listeners out there who have experiences with dyslexia, uh, what the episode was talking about. And of course, we got another great look at a character I'm growing pretty fond of, George. Uh, he's a little quirky. He's got his idiosyncrasies, but I, I really like what he adds to the show and I hope that he's featured more prominently. And this was all really great to see it from his perspective instead of from the outside looking in like with the the other kids it's like they are part of it but it is george's story to tell and they told it very well i felt like i really com- came to a better understanding of dyslexia when i was younger and even more now with the help of lucas and everyone else um yeah th- there's there's not a whole lot that i can add to what i've already said but i do think it's a really good example of what arthur does best and that's take messages and concepts that kids need to understand apply their own little spin to it and make it fun with the characters that they have have, and they did all that and it would be the best if not for number one and if you've been listening all season you know that this is uh this is coming for me it's one of the ones i think should be immortalized in the arthur canon of all time episodes arthur and los vecinos i only wish that we hadn't lost the episode where a friend of the show susan velasquez talked about uh what it was like to have a latino family um on the show Lat- latinx family um on the show and I could even tell um, just watching it on my own I felt like this feels important it's so nice to be able to have this kind of uh, greater diversity at a time when diversity wasn't as being called for in as public of spaces I'm diversity has always been being called for but nowadays it's something it's a cry that's becoming louder and louder and thankfully accepted by more people and this is a great way to do it it didn't feel forced it didn't feel um, stereotypical it just felt like new characters being introduced and hey they're from a different background it's great and I love the interactions they feel so natural D- the way the DW and Arthur and even mom and dad interact with uh, the new characters I think really added a lot to it it made it feel real and th- there are a few Arthur episodes that really um, do that Make make a situation feel real, as real as you know talking animals can seem. But that's the mark of a great show, isn't it? It's uh, it adds its own kind of spin on a realistic scenario, and I was really glad to watch it again. I felt that it was even like it held up incredibly well as an adult, and it, for my money, it's one of the best. It deserves to be up there with the best of season one and the other um, the other episodes that we fawned all over. So I. I loved Arthur and Los Vecinos, and I can't wait to see the the family again. I'm sorry, I'm blanking on their last name, but I, I I'm excited to see them again. And that's it. Uh, that is my top five uh, for this uh, for this season. A little bit of everything, you know. We've got our heavy concept episodes. We've got our binky episodes. We've got our guest stars. We've got our message episodes. We've got new characters, like everything. So in the end, season six, I wouldn't say it's um, you know terrific. It's uneven, is what I would say. But when it's good, it's really, really good. And I hope that you've had a good time listening along and watching along with us, too. Hope that you are watching the episodes as well. Uh, I I must say as well, I was alerted to this on uh, social media, on our Twitter, as we get into Season 7. I incorrectly said that this is the season coming up with postcards from Buster in it. That's not true. I was actually thinking of other specialty episodes. So let me uh, just give you an idea of what's to come in Season 7 as we end off this episode here. Uh, We've got episodes including Muffy going to Crown City. Um, We've got uh, Elwood City Turns 100. That's one that I feel people may remember. It's a double episode. I don't know if we've actually done double episodes before other than the ones that are about the same story. In fact, we have another double episode in this one, uh, April 9th which I know is one that people have been looking forward to, you listeners have been looking forward to for a long time. I'm really excited to cover that one. Um, I think, I I, and and to to watch it myself, I think that's going to be, that's going to be a a hell of a way to end Season 7. I can't wait to get into it, and I'm really hoping the episodes in between are just as good as I remember them. Buster becoming Amish, uh, the return of the snowball. Some of these, I don't even remember what they're about at all. But we'll wait and see together, won't we? And that will be hopefully coming up in May. Uh, and I'll just let you know what the deal is. So I'm recording this on a Monday. In two days, I'm flying out to Cuba for my honeymoon. 
And after that, this, of course, this week you have this season six recap. Uh, I get back next Wednesday from Cuba, so we're going to have a filibuster ready to go for all of our Patreon subscribers. If you're not sure what that is, a filibuster is an episode where Lucas and I talk about uh, just what we've been doing lately. It could be uh, movies, it could be um, music, video games. Uh, With Lucas, it could be anime. He's more into anime than I am. In fact, I believe that's what his topic is going to be about. He's going to be talking about the spring anime season uh, uh, that we're in the middle of. I, myself, am going to be talking about... I'm going to be doing three things. I'm going to be reviewing the movies Us and Captain Marvel and WrestleMania from just the other weekend. So if you you think you want to hear that, if you want a little extra dose of ECL, and if you want to get access to all of the commentaries and uh, other bonus audio and uh, everything else. That's patreon.com slash Elwood City Limits for as little as a dollar a month, and we thank you, all of our patrons. You guys are amazing. And if you want access to the Discord uh, group as well. So coming up next time on Elwood City Limits proper, which will probably be into May, we'll be talking about Castaway and the Great Sock Mystery. Until then, for Lucas Mancini, I am Will Young. Thank you for a great season six. Thank you all as well for your wedding wishes. And now I don't have to talk about it anymore. I'll just uh, maybe... This is really this is really hard to do. I'll just do that every once in a while. You know what that means. Have a great Easter, everybody. And I hope these episodes find you well. And uh, have a great time until we see until we talk to you again in a couple of weeks. <laughs>